My name is Gareth McNamara and um, I'm from Dublin, Ireland. I train in a gym called uh, SPG, Straight Blast Gym in Dublin. And um, here's a few standing submissions and I've, I've got a couple of them to work in competition and they're, they're legitimate. They uh, don't cost too much in energy, so hopefully... Will you be my... Okay, will you... My use... No. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll get started with the first one. Um, are, you, are you joining in? Okay, okay. Uh, f first of all, um, we'll do a standing uh, standing choke. One you've probably seen done in, in the guard or from, from the knee, knee belly position, okay? And... Um, this one is kind of a surprise attack. Not many people use this, and it, but I've got it to work. I put a guy asleep in a competition with this at a purple belt level. It, it, it's totally legitimate. So we're here, and we're moving around, and we're fighting. Da, da, da. And typically in jiu-jitsu, people kind of lean over a little bit like this, and we're fighting like this. This, this, this is a position that I like for, the, for this technique. Okay? Now, what I do then is I'm going to reach over over his arm here, and take a grip like so, so my thumb is down in this position. This one, my thumb is up, okay? And this, if, if my partner knows it's coming, he's gonna go and squeeze his, squeeze his neck muscles, and it, it, it's, it, it's slower to act. This is done when we're moving around, he's relaxed, his neck is nice and relaxed, and, and we, can, we can put it on then, okay? When he's, when he's leaning over like this, it's ideal, because if you, if you look at me, yeah, if we're moving around, we're looking at, that means his head is up and his neck is kind of quite open, yeah? Obviously, if someone is like this, their shoulders up and shrugging, it's not going to be there. So, if we're here, we're moving around. I take this overhand grip here, and the idea is I'm going to punch into his shoulder at the same time as I pull on this one and step back, okay? Well, that's, that's it, right? It's not, not except, uh, amazing, or it's not uh, very complicated or anything, but a few things. This side, what I'm doing is, I'm pulling strongly and stepping, back stepping with this, to pull strongly on this, on this side. This one here, you've probably seen the one where you punch straight into the throat. We're not doing that. What I'm actually doing is punching into the shoulder. That's the direction that I'm going in. And it's the jacket, the, like a rope, being pulled into his uh, carotid artery in here, okay? Again, if he tense your neck, uh, now his, his muscles are strong, as Sternomastoids are stiff, it's, it's quite strong, but no one can go around like this the whole match and have their neck like this, it, you know, it's quite tiring, most people won't do that. But if he knows it's coming, if he knows, then he'll tense up, and it'll be slower to work, okay, and he'll have time to defend it. But if I can work this when he's relaxed, we're moving around, da da da, fighting, you switch, he doesn't know it's going, to... and that's it. You know, you, I put a guy asleep before he hit the ground with this, it works really well. Um, Remember, not into the throat, you're punching in the direction of the shoulder, you're punching over here, and I'm not standing square in front of them, I'm offsetting myself by backstepping. Also, don't lock your elbow, because he might quack on your elbow or something. Keep it like a, you know, a five degree bend, ten degree bend, slight little bend in it, so it's not completely locked. So, you're here, you're fighting around, da, da, da. switch your grip over, don't sell it. And that's it. Easy, right? Do you want to give it a go? Please. One, two, three. So, a couple of things on it. Um, don't, give yourself enough material. Give yourself enough jacket to work with. Don't grab up too high. It's not a fist into the troth, okay? Um, that's easier to defend for him, and it's, uh, you know, the, the fist is there in front. I'm actually hiding my fist underneath his jacket. So it's like my, I'm aiming my fist to go into his opposite shoulder. And we're all friends here, and we're nice training partners and everything with each other, so we're kind of being nice and applying it gradually and giving it to... But in fact, it's, it's a punch, like you're throwing a, a punch into his shoulder. So it's like a shock. It's almost like a karate chop in the neck kind of thing. It gives a horrible... Like, it, ma it makes you feel like your head's going to explode when it's put on really fast. It, it's, it's really miserable. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we, we're being nice to each other, and so it's, it's a little bit slower to come on. But when it, when it goes on for real, it feels like your head's going to explode, and it's, it's kind of quick. So it, it works nicely in competition and stuff like that. But uh, obviously here, we're being nice, so it bear that in mind in terms of how quick it acts. But normally when you're doing it, you want to punch. So it's not, it's not normally in jiu-jitsu we have a controlled position. Maybe we've mounted them, we've side control. So we can afford to apply a choke and gradually apply it on. Here we have little or no control on his body. He can move, he can defend it well. So we have to compensate for that with doing it fast. 
and uh, kind of nast in a nasty way. So it, it's kind of a brutal choke. Um, also this one, don't just stand in front of them and do this and use your arm strength. That's not very good. It's really that I'm wheeling back and this is pulling. So this arm is, I'm, and I'm getting to the side a little bit of them. So it's punching into the shoulder and this one's pulling and I'm stepping back to the side. So you're here, and also if you're standing very square, you don't have as much neck to work with, and it's not as, usually in Jiu Jitsu, people are like this, yeah? This is the time of position that I like to do it. When we're here, and we're fighting around, the guy has his hips back, and it's, he's bent over a little bit like this. This is the ideal kind of position to set this one up, okay? So you're fighting around, and you're looking for your grips, and tossing around, take that, he still doesn't, not too worried. That's it. Okay, oh, into his throat. So it's almost like a uh, karate chop, judo chop into the neck. Okay, so do it again with your partner, but just give them even one nasty, fast one. Okay, and see how that feels. Okay, where you go. One, two, three. Um, just from walk through round, one or two little things. Um, don't stop. You know, uh, keep keep turning around in this direction. Pull strongly on this one and punch into the shoulder, okay? And remember, it's a snappy one. It's not a slow, gradual choke. That gives him time, because it's easy to defend. You can just get his hands up and start defending it, okay? This is one of the ones where he has his own grip. So he's gripped up on me, I gripped up on him. I switch over, remember, not fist into the throat. Give yourself enough jacket so it's that you're going into his opposite shoulder, okay? It's reasonably fast, and if you really punch it in, Oh, they, they panic, it's a panicky one, you know? If you are doing this, and he goes to defend it, you probably use both his hands to defend it or something, then you might get, you might get enough Soto Gary at the other side, if you're lucky. But it, it, if he has enough time, if you do it slow and gradual application, he'll have time to squeeze his neck muscles and defend it, okay? This is one that you're doing snappily, and it's a dirty one, okay? Cool, now, moving on. Um, next, we'll do, uh, a wrist lock, okay? Everybody, one of the first martial arts things I ever was shown when I was a kid was kind of like, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah, or, you know, someone grabs your, grabs your hair and you, you grab their hand and do this kind of thing. Or, you know, those kind of wrist locking things. Everyone's seen those, they're, they're cool, but more often than not, especially against anyone who's trained, as soon as you grab it, they'll, they'll pull their hand out and it slips out, okay? So, this one, I set up all for potential grip break. So, if someone has weak grips, I, I typically, you have the seam here, grip underneath, and you can strip the grip off like that on the move, okay? You just keeping it tight to me. I don't raise my elbow off my body. My elbow stays tight to my body, and I push it off. So, I'm not pulling up my finger grips. I'm turning my hand down and pushing. Okay, sometimes it works, and that's cool. No, are you strong? And it doesn't work. Okay, boom. It works? Cool, I've, I've done a grip break. If not, oh, oh, he's focusing on the grip now. He won't let me break it, and he's squeezing nice and tight. Okay, so be it. Switch to underneath your own jacket. Wrap. Again, at this stage, maybe he gets nervous. Shit, he's wrapping my hand up, and he lets go, pulls his hand out. Okay, grip break, cool. Now he doesn't have his grip anymore. So be it, we'll carry on. But, boom, try and break, he won't let go. Switch, again, give yourself enough material. I wrap and grab and lock my elbow in like this. Very important, see my knuckles here are filling the space here, my elbow is tight to my body. That little detail is important. And now, good. Okay. Set up all your, all that kind of stuff too often. So it traps his wrist in a really mean way. It's important though, look, that what I'm essentially doing is pinning his palm, you know, you know, pinning his palm against my chest. So when I, when, what I'll do is, first I'll try and break, break the grip, and if that uh, grip breaks, so be it, I'll carry on with all the stuff I like to do. If he doesn't, now he's squeezing really hard, he wants to keep it. Okay, switch, give yourself enough material to wrap it and grab it. I grab it here, and this is very important, I lock my knuckles in, okay, to trap his hand. Pull your hand out. Quite hard, okay? Then you get underneath the elbow, head towards his elbow, or head towards the shoulder, you can tap him. Pretty strong, raise the elbow up, all that kind of stuff. If you want to then set up, you can wrap over it, get here, set up a lot of cool stuff off that, obviously, okay? So, just coming close, you can see that, because if you give yourself 
If you wrap over too much material, then there's no control, okay? If you don't give yourself enough material, then there's a big gap here. So it's just right, so is that. I'll do it without the jacket, so you can see that when I have it, that my knuckles are locking, my knuckles are on the back of his hand here, where the wrist and the hand join in that space there, and my elbow is tied to my body. So I grab, whoop, wrap here, twist in. Yeah, give it a go, it works pretty strongly. But look, that little detail there, see my, exactly where my knuckles are, whoop, whoop, in there, that's where it is. So my knuckles, on the back of his hand, and the elbow is in tight, gluing his hand to my chest. You know, it's the equivalent of one of these kind of, you know, arm, wristy lock things, but you can pull out. So, say you're wrapping a rope around it. But first, make him commit to the grip. Try and break his grip. Oh, he's strong. Okay. Oops. Works 6% of the time, all the time. <laughs> so, please give it a go, okay? One, two, three. The, the little detail of the hand on the back of the, knuckles on the back of the hand, is, uh, is the key, okay? So, um, and as well, make him commit to the grip. Make him feel strong, you know? You can try and break his grip with that, that little grip break, but, oh, he's sturdy, you won't let it go, okay? Switch, not too much material. If you put too much material, it'll be too loose. Not enough material, you don't, you don't close the gap here, okay? So it's just right, so it's that my knuckles are squashing the back of his hand. So this part of my knuckles is here collapsing and my elbow is in my ribs. So it's tight, okay? So just enough. So I take grip like so and I twist. So it locks his palm to my hand. Now it's hard to pull it out. Quite hard to pull out and then reinforce it behind the elbow, okay? You can lift his elbow, and you might submit him, or hand on the back of the elbow and drop your head towards his shoulder. Okay, or if you want to tie him up, elbow over, and you might then start setting up your forward throws or front headlock or all that kind of stuff. So you'll, you'll drop his posture down, okay? And then you can pull this, pull this across you, do all your throws, or sit up the front headlock. All that kind of stuff. So it's a nice little gripping, gripping sequence. So one more time, here, try to break, he commits to it. And if a couple of inches, Pass, this is the key, okay? Lock it in. So my knuckles are on the back of his wrist, okay? So, or, or, sorry, in the back of his hand, I should say. Here, kind of at the joint almost, here, okay? So boom, here. It should feel super tight just even by that. And then back of the elbow then to finish it off, okay? Another couple of minutes in that, please. One, two, three. Uh, just to recap on this a little bit, the little detail is the key, okay? It's really about locking in here. If you do all kinds of, uh, try and break the grip, your own gi, wrap, and here, twist. So it's kind of a twist in here, okay? If I just pull it across, there's no, there's no tightness. I haven't, the, the twist winds everything tight. So you're keeping their, their, their uh, palm flat to the chest, so it's effectively like that, locked on me, so you can then, then wrist lock him, okay? If you allow his wrist to move and to come away from my chest, then this wrist lock won't work, okay? He, can, he has too much movement in his wrist, or he'll pull it out. So when you're, when you're, when you're twisting it, it's, it's a twist to make it tight, okay? So, okay, my elbow should be against my body, my knuckles are going like this, tight in like this, rotating, and my, this part of my hand is right here. Boom, lock it in, kind of on between the wrist and the, and, the, and the hand, okay? Then the other hand goes behind the elbow. You can lift it, but probably the more solid way is behind the elbow, just cup it, head on the outside, and go down as you come back, okay? If then you want to wrap over, that's cool too. Whoop. Get this kind of thing going. And then take this, Whoop. You can throw somebody pretty easily from here, okay? Or indeed, on headlock because you've broken their posture down with this thing here. Okay, mm -hmm. so moving along, that was kind of just uh, a few little details. But work on that and get the make sure your knuckles are tight. Next, again off a grip break. Um, so you can try that one again. That 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 one handed grip break is nice. Try to do it if you can, and they've got you know a free hand. Okay, but if that doesn't work, we go two handed grip breaks. By doing this, I also make the material nice and taut. I'm going to fix. Pass that into a pistol grip, nice deep pistol grip. By making the material taut at the beginning, it's easier to feed it into the other one. So I have a strong pistol grip. 
easy to break. If I just try and go straight for the pistol grip, I try and gather it up or whatever, but I'll end up not with such a deep handful of, of cloth. Whereas, if I try and go for a single hand grip break, oh, maybe it will work, and that's cool. Or if it doesn't, he's a gorilla, or he's focused on his grip, uh, it doesn't work. I've got it nice and tight, and I feed it deep, and then I've got a full fistful of material. That's perfect. Now, two on one, elbows tight, pop the, bri prop, uh, pop the grip off. Then off center, standard arm drag material, okay? Usually we go, say, into the armpit here, and we work our arm drag, or we're knee, or uh, guard pulling, or whatever your style likes, okay? But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the lapel, or with my thumb in, about where the label might be on his jacket. Now from here, there's a bunch of throws and stuff we can do, and like I say, it's good for pulling guard, it's good for attacking foot sweeps, or whatever kind of throws you like doing from the arm drag position. But today we're interested in standing submission. So let's imagine then that my partner is going to break this grip on me. So he goes ahead and breaks that grip, but I still have this nice piece of real estate up here, up in the collar. So then my next move is going to be hand in here. It doesn't have to be exactly tight. And I don't, again, I don't want to let him know exactly what I'm doing. If, if he knows, he's going to have more chance to defend it, obviously. So we went single hand grip break, doesn't work this time, pass it, two on one, pop, pistol grip, arm drag, normally we do this. In this case, I'm going into the lapel. You know, move him around, obviously, we're tussling around and fighting and da da da, he breaks this grip. Pop, here, okay? Now, I like to just ease myself onto the ground, I'm gonna go down on this knee, and imagine I'm gonna put my ear kind of aiming for his foot, but my head's kind of going to the inside. Okay, so I'm here, and elbows together, obviously. Boom. Sorry, sorry. No, that's all right. But it comes on pretty quick, okay? But where I'm going with this then is, I'm gonna drop my head down. Okay. Thanks. Again. So I'm here, try to single hand break, boom, doesn't work. Pass into the pistol grip, two on one. Pop it off, arm drag, fighting around, Thumb in where the label is. Fighting around, he manages to break the grip on me. So be it, switch to this. Uh, you can dive into it, but an easy way to do it is, is just to go onto your knee here and tuck yourself so it's at your head. Imagine like my ear's going towards his foot, but my head's on the inside. And roll him over me then. So. Up, up, two on one, up. Oh. Yeah. So uh, the, the finish then, if you, you know, depending on how deep your collar grips are, if it's further away, you might have to go a little bit further with this. But you know that isn't super close. You're not touching or anything. There's a decent distance in here, and the finish then is I'm coming around here and dropping my head down here to finish, and you know, yeah. chop his head off. Okay. Yeah. Oh. The space between the trunk and the... Uh, Always oh, closer is better, but I don't want to... I don't want to um, give the game away either, because... Okay. If I have this grip, and I start going in yeah. here and going, let me get my hands together here, yeah. it kind of gives the game away then. He, he kind of knows. knows. What's going on. He knows, oh shit, he, he realizes he's in the baseball choke type of scenario. So, instead of giving that away too much, I, I'd rather keep the element of surprise and go not quite so deep. So look here, we're about, what's that? Like okay. quite a decent, not about a hand or two's distance apart. It's quite far usually, but it's gonna wind up quite a lot. So even though it's got a, a pretty big gap there, it winds on quite well. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be connected. Of course, if we're in a, again, you see, cause standing is different because we have less control. So we have to go a little bit um, we don't have the same, like if we were, we're in a position like, you know, another position, then I'd be happy to get my hands together and go for it, and that's stronger because I have the time to do it. Whereas in standing, I don't really have the time to keep adjusting my hands to get super deep here without him realizing what I'm doing. So to keep the element of surprise, I'm happy just to get this. You know, I'm okay with that and it should still work. So one more time, collar grip, 
Try the one-handed grip. This one-handed grip works really well. People underestimate that one-handed grip break, but if you get someone, you know, distract them on this side, pop it off, that's cool, and you've got a free grip break then, okay? So, grip the seam, and it's a turnover and a push with my palm. Oop, pushing it close to me. Oop. Oh, it doesn't work. Pass, two on one, pop, arm drag, collar grip. He releases that, okay, get my own. Knee, ear to the inside, ear to his foot, but head's kind of on the inside. Rolling in, up over the top. He can sit through here and then step over. Okay. Then you can see it's kind of almost like a, you'll end up in a kind of almost like Kezigatami type of position and then just step over, whoop. Drop your head on this side and finish your one. Okay, want to give it a go? Okay, one, two, three. Just going around. Um, oh, a couple of little things. Try, try that grip break, okay? When you're doing it, don't lift your elbow away from your body. Keep it tight to you. It's a bit like that uh, tricep push down exercise you all do in the gym, right? It's kind of like that. My, my elbow stays my Don't raise your, if I raise my elbow, there's no power. It's kind of close to me and slow kind of push with, 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 a, with a good posture. And my hand doesn't try and pull, my fingers aren't pinch grip and pulling. It's, it's, it's pinching at the beginning, but turning over to push. So it's not a pull, it's a push off. Yeah, to, put, to break that single grip. And usually you can do it on the move. You know, if, if, we're, if I'm looking at it and he's looking at it, we're like, okay, I'm gonna do it will never work. It's kind of, we're moving around and maybe I'm pulling on this collar and we're shifting. And I shift it off. It's done on the move. It's one of those ones you'll catch sometimes. And sometimes if he's determined, he's like, I'm not giving this up, then he won't give it up. It won't work then, okay? But it's one to certainly try because it doesn't cost anything. It's just one hand and, you, and, and you'll catch somebody. So it's one to do on the move. You're moving up and pop off the grip. That's cool. You've you broken this grip off and you can do stuff with this. But anyway, I digress. Here, pop, pop. You got the tightness. Feed it. You got loads of fist material then. Two on one. And again, elbows tight and keep it almost where it is. And it's my body weight moving away from his fingers. Don't try and use your arms. It's, it's muscles then, okay? His fingers aren't going to be as strong as my whole body moving away from it, okay? This grip is more or less keeping his hand where it is in space, and I'm moving away from it. Boop. Don't try and use, do an arm wrestle and pull up my arms. It's a body weight shift. Boop. Pop it off, okay? Off-center it so you can't just re-grip me then. Okay, so pop it, off-center it, standard arm drag stuff, thumb in here. Now, a couple of things. This grip break, a lot of guys will go two on one and, and, and pop it off. Or, yeah, yeah, you can just yeah, pop it off. Okay, that's, that's a really good way of doing it. Here's just a little side, side note on break. If you take a sleeve grip on me, okay? What you can do is wind underneath, oh, pop up. But a V, a V with the, with the, that's a standard sleeve grip break. So uh, if you have a sleeve grip on me, and, and any kind of sleeve grip, pop, move underneath, pop, pop like that. That's an easy sleeve grip break. And then you have your own grip, yeah? So I, I know a lot of people do, like wind the wind around and that's cool and that works and everything but if you can go underneath and it'll pop really easy so you're keeping it close to you and using that V but that's just a little side it's a, an aside okay boom 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 pop we're here he breaks this grip boom pops it off in here now everyone's pretty good to this you know obviously closer is better but don't sacrifice fumbling in here trying to get it and then he knows what I'm doing. I don't want to give up the element of surprise. So, you know, I, I'm happy even if I just get it somewhere around his shoulder, that's fine. For, you can dive into it, but make it easy on yourself and your body. Drop onto this knee. This elbow is starting to wind across here and I'm dropping side on. So I'm coming down like I'm putting my ear towards this foot here. My head's kind of on the inside. It ends up on the inside, but that's the direction my ear is going in. So I'm going down onto my side and winding. Come here. I won't wind on the arms too strong, but when you land here, think of yourself kicking into it like a Kezigatami. You all know Kezigatami position. Sitting through into Kezigatami. Then when I go through from here, now this back leg steps over. Okay, and now the finish will be easy. Okay. So Kezigatami then step over because two people kind of fumbling around down there. So I think that will fix a lot of that, those problems. Any questions? Yeah, no? Okay, let's, let's drill it for another five minutes. Okay, one, two, three. So uh, a couple of people asking about the finish for the, for the, for the, uh, 
for the baseball choke, a couple of things. Your wrists shouldn't be like this when you're finishing it. They should be like this. It's like when you're doing any kind of choke. You're not going to have your wrists like this. It's like this kind of strong wrist, okay? So that kind of angle, not, not this kind of angle for the finish. And look to bring your elbows together, okay? If your elbows are apart, it's going to be very hard. And if your wrists are like this, it's going to be very hard to finish. So this kind of shape with your wrists and elbows together. My pussy uke. Um, so I'll do it from the top, try and break. Pop here, move them around, try your, you have a bunch of throws obviously here and attacks you can do from here. This is a perfect position to pull guard, but he breaks the grip, boom. Switch, doesn't have to be super, super close. Boom, in, over, Hezekatami. Look, cause here, look, my elbows are already tight. And look at my wrists. If I allow my wrists to be like this, it's very hard to finish. My wrists need to be like this, okay? That's the key difference in, uh, in having it being really fast tapping and it's a kind of a, a struggle to finish. It's not this, it's this, okay? It's very important detail. So when I'm in here, if I'm lazy with my wrists, it's not very strong there as you can see. I need to be like this. So instead of being like this, like this. So here, elbows together. Don't be lazy with strong wrists. Sit over. It'll we'll come on much quicker, okay? It'll be one of those <coughs> chokes rather than being a slow struggle and he's able to defend it, okay? So, not this, this, and elbows together. Any other questions? Yeah, I feel like his arm, after you go from the Kizikatame into the baseball field, it's pretty good way. This that one? arm. Yeah. Yeah, well. Well, no, you're fine. I, I guess I'm just. Well, th this one, yeah, like he, he probably will start using his arms to defend, but. Once you, once you have the elbows together, it's hard for them to get in. Like, because you'd be worried of, may, I, I can understand maybe if I'm loose or big gaps here, maybe you can get in and answer the telephone or something. So I'm always looking to go elbows together and wrist strong, okay? One more time from the, any other questions? One more time from the top. So, boom, try to, try to single hand break, pass, pop, in, fighting around, fire your throws, do all your stuff, he manages to break it. In. Kezigatami. Like you should, you can actually probably finish someone from here, just from the Kezigatami position. Like you can finish guys from here, but it's much stronger when you step over. Okay. Yes. And keep going through here. But really concentrate on your wrist not being like this. Get them like that, and I think you'll get that faster submission every time because it gets more of the blade of the wrist onto the onto the throat. Okay. Okay. Right. Three more minutes. I have one more technique to do. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, we've got 10 minutes, so I'll do two little quick ones. This one, it's probably a lower chance of success standing, but it's worth a try, especially if you've got, if you've got strong grips, if one of those guys, and that's a Ryoto Jimmy, okay? So the thing is, you don't want to have not enough material to work with. A lot of people grab it up too high and try it, and it's too difficult. Give yourself enough material to work with, and it's, okay? It's, it, it, if you're strong, it, it's much easier, okay? It's hard to do with someone who's really strong. That's why it's, it's not the highest percentage move, but it's one you should have in your toolbox. It, it, it's quite, quite a strong one. So I'm here, so not, not too low. I don't have enough material to work with. Make, make sure you have enough material and... Yeah. Yeah, see if it works now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's a cardroid artery one, and it's a turn in. So my elbows come in. Boop. Here, boom. That's it. Simple, right? So it's these sharp parts of my knuckles are going into the into carpet. It's reasonably easy to defend, you know, you can start to work in it or defend the choke. So it wouldn't be the, the most high percentage one, but give it a try. Yeah, you know, but don't have it up. If you have it up too high, it won't work. Give yourself enough material here and wind in. Yeah, it's dirty enough. Okay. Uh, may I use you as my okay one more time? So, stand, stand, and don't grab, if you grab too high, you don't have enough material to work it. Give yourself enough material and turn in. Yeah, there you go. Okay, try that one out. Cheap little one, give it a go. One, two, three. I was doing, my knuckles, this part of my knuckles, should be going into the, the carotid arteries, okay? And by the time I've twisted it, my palms should be almost facing back towards me. And if I, but the thing is, if I grab really high on the material, I, I don't have enough jacket to do it with. So grab a little bit lower, okay? And go in here. 
<laughs> it's, it's unpleasant, okay? So if you grab here, I don't have enough material to turn my wrists. Yeah, so grab a little bit lower and my knuckles are going into the knuckles in here. It's, it's, it's quite a horrible. Anyone not getting it to work? Let me do. Okay, try it again. One, two, three. You need a little, like I said, standing chokes, you need to, they're not, they, people have more room to maneuver, it's easier to defend them. So you have to have kind of fast, snappy ones that people, oh, it gives them a shock. And that one, Ryoto Jimmy, works on that principle. Okay, and remember, it's not a collar choke. I'm not trying to choke him with the collar. I'm trying to just go in here and go, and it's super painful and comfortable, so it's kind of <coughs> twisted in. The jacket, I, like if I, could, if I was really strong, I'd do it, no, Jack can just do it here. Just, okay, that's the move. The jacket is just there to kind of help support me. So don't go too high or you won't have space to rotate in to get this part of your knuckles dug into the sides of his neck, okay? So it's here, okay? So don't try and, it's not, a, we're all used to getting the collar super tight to attach it. This is, we want a bit of collar to play with. If you grab too high, it won't work. So you can grab it a little bit lower. And again, this is one you might use to your tussling around and your bit of jacket and just like that. Okay, it's a quick little acting one. It's kind of a pain one and a shock one. You have a bunch of things in your neck. So fiddle around with that a little bit, but think, don't forget about the jacket. It's not a collar choke. It's a, 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 a kind of knuckles into the, into the throat pain one, okay? And it's, uh, so you don't want to get too high. Bring it low enough so you can work in like that and wind it in, okay? So guys, that, that's everything I really want to show you today is a few quick ones. Um, punch into the throat, wind into the throat. Boom, boom, boom. Baseball choke. Uh, oh, and we did the wrist lock thing too. I, Okay, a few cheap ones. All right, guys, thank you very much for coming down. All right. Um,